In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a one-way analysis of variance in JASP. I'm going to be using the data set Fictional Scale Data Version 2. You'll see it's saved or a link to it saved in the description to this video so that you can follow along if you wish to. Um, a one-way ANOVA is used when we're testing um, the means of three or more groups. It can be done with two, too, but if we only have two groups, we typically use a t-test. But if we have three or more groups and we want to see whether the means are equal for all of those groups, what we're going to do is an analysis of variance. In this particular case, we have a sum scale, a sum of the, these scales, and I have three race groups. These are fictional. This is just made up data I put in there. Okay, so those don't really represent anything, but we'll pretend those represent three groups, three racial groups, and we want to compare whether the means are equal. When we do an analysis of variance, what we're doing is we're looking to see whether um, our null hypothesis is that all three means are um, equal to each other. Alternative is that at least one mean is different from the others, and we're going to do that. So let's go ahead and click on ANOVA here. You see we have all of these options here. I'm only going in this video address this first option under classical, which is we're going to just do a one-way analysis of variance. Um, there's these other options that are more advanced that I may show how to do in other videos. The Bayesian options are, again, more advanced. Let's click on ANOVA. Okay, um, this interface pops up, which is similar to, to interfaces for many of its other types of procedures. What I'm going to do is choose my Y variable and pop it over into the dependent variable box. Then you'll notice that this shows scale, meaning my dependent variable must be labeled as scale here in Jasper. It will not let you do it. You will see that this variable that is going my fixed factor, which is basically the variable in, um, that tells me um, that my grouping variable tells me what groups I have. It must be categorical, nominal, or null, or won't let you do it. And I'm going to use race in this particular case, which is labeled as ordinal. If it is not labeled correctly, let's say that I um, I put, um, whoops, I need that, I put that in the wrong spot. Let's say that I mistakenly um, labeled this as scale, okay, it's not going to let me do it, I need to go change it. Okay, so I've got it over here. And it's going to just, once I have those things in, you're going to get your basic results. And you can glance at it quickly and see, oh, lack of statistical significance. Okay, not surprising considering I just randomly gave the different scores, you know, different um, groups. So what you're going to see down here, let me talk through some of the options. There are some that are quite advanced that won't apply to one-way analysis of variance or that I'm not going to talk about here. One that is important to include is descriptive statistics. Basically, that is looking at your means of your three groups. So I can see, okay, group one has the lowest, group, you know, group two has the medium mean, group three has the highest. However, not statistically significant, so we can't really interpret that. We might report it, but we can't really say that that's a real difference in those three groups. Okay, you can also do these kinds of effect sizes. That's a little more advanced. I will not talk about that here model. We're, we're not going to get into that with one-way analysis of variance. This is something that you would do if you're doing a much more complicated situation. Okay, we will look at assumption checks right here. Um, similar to doing an independent samples t-test, we need to assume that we have um, homogeneous standard deviations or variances for the three groups. You can see the three over here. They're not too different from each other. A good rule of thumb that um, that I was taught was if your biggest one standard deviation right here, the biggest standard deviation is more than double the smallest, then you worry about it. However, we can do an actual test here if we wish to, okay? And I would do it. I would just click on that button there. That will run the assumption to check. You see down here, not statistically significant, but close. And then if there if it were statistically significant, there are various corrections, you can do that. I'm not going to talk in depth about that. There's debates about um, how this should be done the best. Um, for the most part, if, if you were to um, get, get into a situation with, with greatly non-homogeneous variances, you might want to look at some more advanced techniques or talk to a statistician to help you with that. 
And then we have a variety of other things that can be done here. Again, beyond, beyond what I'm going to teach in this video, but other than I want to point out, we do have something, we do have contrast, contrast and post hoc tests. You may or may not know what those are um, watching this video. Contrasts um, are essentially ways of saying, you know, let's say that it did come out as statistically significant, it did not here. Which one of the groups is significantly different than the others? Can we say that group three is significantly better than both one and two? Or can maybe we only say group three is significantly higher than group one? Could we say that group two is significantly higher than group one? So we may have questions like that we wish to ask. And the contrast allows us to do that here. Um, th that's where that drop down is. It gives you a variety, a variety of options. The simple situation, let me just show you. Um, um, the simple contrast basically compares each group to group one. So it's going to say, is group two significantly different than group one? Is group three significantly different than group one? And it will find those for you and, and find the p-values, okay? But that's something where, where if you use this contrast option, you need to, before you even look at the means, before you've collected your data, you need to have decided that's what you're going to look at. Otherwise, you end up inflating your type 1 error or, in other words, maybe concluding statistical significance when it's just something that happened due to chance. And um, we won't go into that because this isn't a theory course, okay, this, this particular video. We also have a post hoc text test option, which is a little bit different, and that's for the case when you have not ahead of time decided which group you might want to compare to another. Um, you're doing it based on your, your results. But I'm not going to go into great detail on this. I'm just showing you the basics, how to run a basic one-way analysis of variance in this video.